Hi everyone, today we'll be discussing the results of the interest trial, that is the intravenous doxycycline, azithromycin or both for severe scrub typhus by Vergi Zital from CMC Valor. So as we know, scrub typhus is a life-threatening zoonotic bacterial infection caused by Sahurinsa Shushugamoshi and it is transmitted by a trombiculate mite larvae. Uh, severe disease actually develops in quite a bit of uh, a number of patients, it's approximately 30 to 40 percent patient of hospitalized patients with scrub typhus that is severe disease. Historically, this scrub typhus has been treated with doxycycline and also to some extent with chloramphenicol. And uh, we do know that there is uh, very less evidence uh, from randomized control trials which uh, have discussed on severe scrub typhus. So recent years have seen that uh, chloramphenicol has been uh, less frequently used and this is because of its toxicity profile. And uh, azithromycin has been used, but uh, it is for usually for mild scrub typhus. Uh, in this background, there is actually a, a small a trial, a randomized trial in South Korea involving patients with mild scrub typhus, where they have seen for a single dose of azithromycin uh, versus uh, doxycycline 200 mg daily for a week. They found that uh, both were equally effective for mild scrub typhus. And there have been quite a few systematic reviews uh, which have seen uh, the treatment of scrub typhus, but there has been usage of uh, heterogeneous drug regimens and outcome measures which were also heterogeneous. And then this, this was the, the background behind uh, progressing towards the interest trial where there was one with the need of more comprehensive data regarding severe scrub typhus treatment. So the PICO statement of this trial was patients who were 15 years or older with severe scrub typhus were included in this trial. An in intervention was a combination therapy of intravenous doxycycline and azithromycin. The control group was monotherapy with doxycycline or monotherapy with azithromycin. And the outcome was a composite outcome, uh, which consisted of death at 28 days, persistent complications at day 7, and persistent fever on day 5. It was a double-blinded, randomized, multicentral trial, uh, which included seven centers across India. Uh, to name a few, it was originally in the CMC Velo, uh, PGI Chandigarh as well, and, and five other centers. Uh, written informed consent was obtained from all patients uh, or their legal representatives because they did include patients between 15 to 18 years of age, and assent was obtained for such patients. The trial execution was seen uh, by an independent data and safety monitoring board. And the trial was conducted between 2018 September to 2022 February. Uh, the inclusion criteria of the trial included patients who were more than equal to 15 years of age who were presented with fever. Uh, scrub typhus rapid test positivity was essential. And along with it, if there was presence of an S chart, severe scrub typhus, according to the trialists, was defined as per the criteria, which I'll come to in the next slide, or if the clinician attending the severe scrub typhus patient felt that there was requirement of IV treatment. Uh, and of course, the willingness to participate in the study with written informed consent was essential. So severe scrub typhus was a group of patients who was included in the trial, and severe scrub typhus was defined by any one of these organ system involvement. Uh, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, CNS, hematology, renal and hepatic systems. If, if any of these systems were, any one of these systems was involved, it was called as severe scrub typhus. The exclusion criteria, uh, according to the trialist, was uh, pregnancy or breastfeeding. Uh, if the patient was in current TB regimen, which included rifampicin, it does have activity against the orange shishugamushi. Uh, if there was documented immunosuppression or long-term steroid therapy, if the patient had medicines that, that might have interacted with the study drugs, if there was allergy to the medications, or if the patient received azithromycin or doxycycline or chloramphenicol for a period of more than 24 hours within three days prior to recruitment. So do remember that there was uh, the last criteria for exclusion uh, was for more than 24 hours if the patient had received any therapy for severe scrub typhus. So suppose the patient had received a single dose of the doxycycline or azithromycin, which did not go on for more than 24 hours, then the patient could be included in the trial. 
So after uh, enrollment, patients were randomized in a one is to one is to one ratio via block randomization. A computer generated list with block sizes of nine was used for randomization. And the drugs for each patient were packed separately and they were delivered to the site. And the treating team, the trial management group, and the patients all remained blinded and unaware of the group assignments. These were the three trial treatments that were given. As I said, there was a, a single monotherapy group of doxycycline, a monotherapy group for azithromycin, and also a monotherapy group uh, and also a combination therapy group of doxycycline and azithromycin. Do note that the dosages used uh, in these um, uh, in, the, in this trial was uh, in the monotherapy group of doxycycline. They gave 200 mg of doxycycline twice daily on day one and followed by 100 mg twice daily for six days. In the azithromycin group, they gave 500 mg of azithromycin twice daily on day one followed by 500 mg daily, once daily for six days. And in the combination therapy group, the doses which are used in the monotherapy groups was used in the combination therapy group as well. Patients were treated at each side for at least seven days and daily assessment of vital parameters was taken. Other, other assessments which were done were hematologic tests, biochemical tests, and one important assay which they did was the PCR assay for uh, DNA assays for Orientia Shishugamusri DNA, which was at baseline in days 1, 3, 7, 10 through 14. This was assessed to see for the clearance of the Orientia Shishugamusri DNA from the blood. Persistent complications were also assessed and documented on days 3 and 7. And among patients who had died after hospital discharge, 28-day mortality was determined by a telephone call with relatives or other caretakers. The primary outcome of the study was a composite of an all-cause mortality on day 28, persistent complications at day 7, and persistent fever on day 5. The composite outcome was actually sequentially calculated if present, and complications on day 7 were defined as per this criterion which includes several systems and any one of these systems, if it was involved and it and it satisfied the criteria on day seven, then they would take it as a persistent complication. These systems included cardiovascular system, respiratory system, CNS, renal and hepatic systems. The other secondary outcomes which the authors have seen for is for death from any cause at day 28 and the usual secondary outcomes such as the duration of ventilation, duration of ICU stay, duration of hospital stay, Few safety parameters with respect to the drugs that were given were also seen by the authors. Authors determined that uh, there were that uh, recruitment of 1509 patients would provide the trial with a 80% power and a between group difference of 10 percentage points, assuming that the primary outcome event percentage was 35% and allowing for a 10% loss to follow up. And this 1509 patients had to be divided into three groups of 503 patients per group. The alpha level was adjusted to 0 0.017, which is 0 0.05 divided by 3, because they had to account for three pairwise com uh, comparisons. And when these three pairwise comparisons had to be done on a single data set, then there was usage of the bond for only correction, and the alpha level was adjusted to 0 0.017. And during a blinded interim review, Incidentally, the primary outcome event was seen in 45% of patients in compared to the assumption that it would have been uh, seen in 35% of the patients. And thus, the sample size had to be revised from 1509 to a sample size of 777 in total. And this 777, when divided into three groups, came up to 259 patients per group. And to account for a certain amount of loss to follow, the, the authors planned to recruit a total of 800 patients. The primary analysis was done on a modified intention to treat population, and they also authors performed a sensitivity analysis in the full intention to treat population, which included approximately extra 15 patients who had not been included in the modified intention to treat population. Uh, other tests which were used was the Cox proportional Kazakhs model uh, and also Kaplan Mayer curves. A per protocol analysis was also performed that excluded patients who had not received at least four days of treatment for severe scrub typhus or whose outcome data was missing. So this was the overall plan of the trial. Patients with age more than equal to 15 years of age with fever and a scrub typhus positivity or presence of an SHR had were eligible to be entering into the trial. Other inclusion criteria were include were presence of a severe scrub typhus which required admission and information and willingness to 
participate in the study. Once the patient fulfills the inclusion and exclusion criteria, a consent was taken and enrolled into the study. There were some baseline sample collections and tests which were sent, which included a certain number of routine tests. There are also some special tests. And then after the patients, all these tests had been sent, the patient was randomized and there was administration of drugs which was group A, which was a monotherapy of azithromycin, group B, which was a monotherapy of doxycycline, and group C, which was a combination therapy of azithromycin and doxycycline. So these were the results of the trial. Uh, 1,684 patients were assessed for eligibility, out of which 809 patients were enrolled and randomized. And ultimately, 794 patients were included in the modified intention to treat analysis. Out of which 265 were in the doxycycline group, 263 in the azithromycin group, and 266 in the combination therapy group. And ultimately, after removing uh, the patients, a few more patients, the per protocol analysis had 257 patients in the doxycycline group, 244 patients in the azithromycin group, and 254 patients in the in the combination therapy group. The most important reason for patients getting uh, not being eligible for the trial was. Uh, the fact that the patients had not uh, produced severe scrub typhus. So characteristics of the patient at baseline was similar in all the groups in terms of the age, sex, the coexisting illnesses. Uh, important to note is the duration of fever before which the patients were included in the trial. Uh, that was a median range of median of seven days in all three groups. And um, the complications, which were the most common complications in severe scrub typhus, which was seen was in the respiratory and the hepatic uh, systems. Uh, and there was a medium number of organs, organ involvement, which was there was approximately two in all the three groups. And the positivity for Orincha Shishugamushi on PCR at baseline was 90% uh, in all the groups, approximately 90% in all the three groups. The primary and secondary outcomes, uh, in the primary secondary outcome, the composite outcome, primary outcome, there was no difference between the groups, um, between the combination therapy and doxycycline group. If, if you see the com primary composite outcome, it was 33% in the combination therapy and doxycycline was 47%. So definitely there was a huge difference in between the groups uh, in terms of the primary outcome. Uh, combination therapy was better in, than the doxycycline group. In the uh, comparison of combination therapy versus azithromycin group, this was also significantly better in the combination therapy group. Primary outcome was much lesser and azithromycin it was much higher. So the differences was minus was 13.3% uh, in the co combination versus doxycycline group. And it was 14.8% in the combination versus azithromycin group. And if you see the p-value, these are both significant, extremely significant. In the secondary outcomes, there was not much difference between the groups. Uh, the death at day 28 and fever defervescence, mechanical ventilation, inotropic support. It was uh, similar between all the groups and none of them was statistically significant. Similarly, dialysis, ICU stay, median duration of hospital stay and recovery to normal sensorium was also similar between all the groups. Uh, a few more results uh, when they were analyzed, uh, we saw that uh, there was combination therapy which was better when compared to doxycycline uh, and when compared to azithromycin. Uh, but in comparison of azithromycin versus doxycycline, there was no much difference. Uh, in the composite primary outcome, uh, if you see doxycycline, azithromycin are much lower and probability of the primary outcome event was actually much higher in the doxycycline azithromycin group. So the combination therapy group performed much better. If you see the survival at day 28, uh, the, there was not much difference as we have already seen in our secondary outcomes. Persistent fever was also, uh, it was similar in all three groups. PCR positivity though, if you note uh, in the groups uh, of azithromycin and in the group of combination therapy, which included obviously the azithromycin, there was much better uh, time to PCR negativity as in the amount of PCR positivity which was much lower in these two groups as compared to doxycycline group only. So combination therapy with doxycycline and azithromycin was superior to monotherapy and this superiority was basically mainly due to the reduced incidence of persistent complications at day 7 and it was not due to the improvement in the mortality at day 28 or presence of fever at day 5. 
So the primary driving force behind the, the, the uh, composite outcome showing superiority was the reduced incidence of persistent complications at day seven. And the authors also did a post hoc analysis where they tried to see for complications requiring organ support. And they were also fewer by day seven in the combination therapy group than in the monotherapy groups. Mm -hmm. And the combination of two drugs uh, might be the reason why there is a greater effect of combination therapy. If we know if we know the mechanism of action of azithromycin and doxycycline, both of them are protein synthesis inhibitors. And because of this, combination therapy might have resulted in a better complete protein blockade, and this might have produced a greater effect. And we do know that uh, there is uh, excellent tissue penetration uh, of uh, and both these antibiotics. In fact, azithromycin actually goes up to 100 times higher concentrations intracellularly than those in the plasma. And uh, the same thing was probably also reflected in, in, uh, in the clearance of the DNA of the Orinshashashugamushi from the blood uh, in the azithromycin group and also in the combination therapy group. So azithromycin did help to clear the DNA much faster. So the importance of reduced complications at day seven is very important in a very resource limited setting such as developing countries. And even though there was not a great, not much difference in the mortality, however, this reduced complications at day seven will help to reduce costs in the resource limited settings. The strength of the trial was it was the first multi-center randomized trial on a neglected tropical disease. There was good adherence to therapy with minimal loss to follow up. And there was blinding, which was extremely adequate. All the uh, all the relevant uh, people were blinded to the trial. And the limitations of this trial include that uh, although there was this is the treatment part of the severe scrub typhus that the authors have seen, there remains to be a lot of research which has to be done on diagnostic uh, and prevention uh, issues with respect to scrub typhus more point of care tests with better sensitivity and specificity are still needed so that the diagnosis of scrub typhus can be made early and treatment can be started accordingly. Uh, the second issue is uh, the limitation of this trial was the use of doxycycline. Uh, doxycycline. Although there is, uh, the authors have excluded children and less than 15 years and pregnant women, uh, doxycycline usage in this groups of people are still debatable. So patients with Patients with children and pregnant women presenting with scrub typhus, there is still a gray area where we have to think of further treatment options. So to conclude, this trial provides evidence that combination therapy with intravenous doxycycline and azithromycin is a better therapeutic option for the treatment of severe scrub typhus than monotherapy with either drug. Thank you.